Straight out, one. Straight in, three. Pizza Flix Television Division presents... Suspense. This one. Woman, you're cruel. Sorry, but it's late, old boy. It's late. <laughs> How are you doing, Mr. Gallagher? Yes, I've been here. Yes, I've been here. Henry. Henry. Your guests are beginning to leave. Are your guests, Carol, not mine. Come down here. Reading. Sitting up there reading all evening. Instead of enjoying the company of cheap actors, theatrical frauds. Shh, my cat, oh, Danny. We're all bonded up and we're ready to go. Oh. Just a minute, darling. Just a minute. Frauds. How dare you, a pill salesman, criticizing men and women of talent. You'll say goodnight to my friends. Do you hear? You'll say goodnight to my friends. Carol. Oh, and here it is. I signed with Henry, darling. Oh, you keep on with those patent medicines, old boy. You sell them. How else could we afford to drink good wine, eh? Oh, uh, about that little matter, old boy. Just a, a five-pound note between friends. As soon as I get a booking, I'll square it. I'm sorry. No. No, I might have known. A bourgeois soul. Here, Paul, let me help you with this. You never do it right. <laughs> good night, Paul. Some papers you forgot to sign in the office, sir, so I brought them over. Have you been here long? About two hours, sir. Two hours? Yes, sir. Mrs. Brown told me to wait. Carol? Oh, I didn't mind, sir. It's just that I haven't had any supper. Oh, I see. You found your little secretary. Why didn't you tell me Miss Stone was here? Why well, wouldn't think of disturbing you in the study. Let me have the papers, girl. Thank you. Good night. And you better button up your coat. It's a bit of cold outside. <laughs> wait, Miss Stone. Here. Here's a pound note for your fare. Oh, Get but I, I don't need this. Now, please, please, take it. Thank Good night, Mr. Brown. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Button up your coat. Button up your coat. It's very cold. <laughs> you did that deliberately, didn't you? Not telling her I was here, huh? You've been keeping her waiting for two hours purely out of spite. A pound note to a mouse of a girl. How terrible. At least I'm not wasting it on cheap, vulgar people. They're artists. Artists. You, with your crazy desire for the stage, what can you do on the stage anyhow? Sing? Your voice is impossible. How dare you? <sighs> Carol, you... You made me come to England to make money, and now you're, you're wasting it, spending it like water. Don't you dare shout at me. I'm through. <laughs> you understand? I've had enough. I'm going home to America. I'm oh. going home. I've got to see you home again. All right, go. You go alone, and you'll not take any of our money. What? You're abandoning me. All right, the bank money becomes mine. You'll not get a cent. Carol. I've worked hard to save that money. All right, I'll give you half. But I must get out. Not a cent. Besides, you're interfering with my career. I'm going to be a success. Carol Russell. Oh, it'll be a pleasure to use my name. 
name again. Carol. Carol, I want that money. I want that money. <laughs> Carol. I take all his money and his house and all the concise Carol. Carol. Morning, Miss Stone. Here's the money that was left over from last night. The huh? cab was only five shillings. Thank you. Cab? Oh, oh yes. Yes, did you get home uh, all right without uh, any oh, trouble? Yes. Uh huh. Didn't catch cold. Oh no, I'm fine. Yeah, but still, this was for your dinner. Oh, there was supper waiting for me at home. I couldn't waste that. It was exciting though, riding in a handsome cab. The driver was such a funny man. Treated me like I was a member of the royal family. You sound very happy. Sound like a sparrow in the morning still. <laughs> you know, Miss, Miss Stone, I do owe you for a dinner. Would you settle for a lunch with me sometime soon? Oh, but you're a... You're a... A married man? Oh. Look at me, Miss Stone. Do I seem different? Mrs. Brown and I separated forever last night. Now then, have a test of them. Mmm, they're delicious. They are all. We finally had a lunch together. You know, it did take me two weeks to keep my promise. I don't know how to thank you. I've never eaten lunch in such a grand place. Mirrors and crystal everywhere. Oh, it's like a fairy palace. <laughs> I never thought I'd be lunching at such a place. How old are you, child? Eighteen, sir. Oh, it's on my yeah. part. And your family, a large one? Oh, they're in Wales, sir. I came to London alone. A girl's not much use on a farm. Eighteen, well. I'm a far away from eighteen. When I was your age, I was traveling over the farmlands of Indiana and America. I can still remember the wheat fields, yellow and swaying in the wind. Oh, that's the time of... Great. I have business to attend to. Why don't you take the afternoon off? Huh? Oh, thank you, sir. It, it's been wonderful. Good yeah, idea. Mr. Cheever, the printer. Oh, May I brought the sample, sir. What sort of cards do you want? Uh, business, marriage, personal? A uh, morning card. Oh, a death announcement, yes. We have some beautiful ones, sir, with angels and wreaths. Well, uh, a plain card with black borders. That'll serve the purpose. Of course, sir. And the uh, words on them, sir? Yeah. Sir Henry Brown sadly announces the unexpected passing away in America of his beloved wife, Carol Brown. Yes, make me up to him. Very good, sir. I was planning to go home to America, and you know what stopped me? You. Hmm? Yes, I wanted a new, new life. I wanted to find something unspoiled, and you stopped me. I'm a bit cold. <laughs> you know, Mister. Do you understand? Do you know what I'm trying to tell you? Oh, say it. Please say it. I understand. Oh, Miss Say it, please. I love you, Esther. 
Everything could end right here. I could die now. Why now? Mr. Brown. I thought I recognized you. Mr. Nardas. This is Miss Stone, my secretary. Pleasure to meet you, Miss Stone. Dr. Brown is showing you the London Zoo, eh? Oh, by the way, Henry, I was terribly shocked to hear of your wife's death. Death? Oh, yes, I thought everybody knew. Cards were sent out. It happened in America. Ah, uh, yes, she was visiting relatives. Well, Carol was a wonderful woman. And friend. Well, I must leave you two to your little pleasures. Good afternoon, Miss Stone. Dead. Why didn't you tell me? She's not. But the gentleman. Oh, Esther. Esther, please. Now you listen to me. Carol ran away with another man to America, and I didn't want to know him. Oh, but why? Because I couldn't stand being made a fool of once again. I put out those cars to save face for myself and her reputation. Please, don't you understand that? <sighs> Esther, but I, I, I'm going to write to Carol tonight. I'm going to ask her for a divorce. We must be married, Esther. Mrs. Henry yes. Brown. Me. I've been Mrs. Henry Brown. Henry and Esther Brown. Oh. Mr. Brown? Who are you? I took the liberty of letting myself in. Rather dusty in your cellar. Inspector Palmer of Scotland Yard, sir. Hi there. This is Rex Marshall speaking for Autolite. We'll get back to our suspense story in just a moment. Well, I guess most everybody recognizes a spark plug when he sees one. But you know, I strongly suspect that a lot of people have never realized that this heart of your car's ignition system has to be a mighty tough hombre. For example, did you ever know that a spark plug fires from one to 2,000 times per minute, depending upon your driving speed? And for another thing, a spark plug must be able to withstand heat up to 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And believe it or not, the spark plug must be able to take pressure up to 800 pounds per square inch. <laughs> I guess you'll agree with me, this little spark plug really does undergo a lot of punishment. So you can see that your spark plugs really have to be in top shape, because if they're not, your car's performance will suffer. You'll find that you get a rougher ride, slower starts, and you use more gasoline too. So that's why it really does pay to have your spark plugs checked regularly by your Autolite spark plug dealer. Now, if cleaning or adjustments are needed, he has the equipment to do the job properly. If replacements are needed, he'll recommend ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs, like, for example, the famous Autolite resistor spark plug, which, incidentally, is the greatest advancement in spark plugs for automotive use in the past 20 years. 
and I'd like to show you exactly why. You see, like our little friend uh, Sparky here, every spark is made up of two parts. The useful front end that does the work of actually burning the fuel mixture, and the useless tail end that does the damage by burning away the spark plug electrodes. Well, now the built-in auto light resistor allows the front end to go through and do its work, but it cuts off almost all of the damaging tail end. Well, since that damaging tail end is almost entirely eliminated, the auto light resistor spark plug gives double spark plug light, smoother engine performance, and quick starts. <laughs> well, believe it or not, that amazing Autolite resistor type spark plug is just one of a complete line of spark plugs, ignition engineered by Autolite for every use. So you see why I say it would really pay you to pay a visit to your Autolite spark plug dealer. You'll find him wherever you see this sign, or simply call Western Union by number, and operator 25 will be glad to give you his location. Remember, won't you, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with auto light. And now, the second act of A Time of Innocence, starring Thomas Mitchell. Gloomy places, Sellers. Uh, Mr. Menard came to Scotland Yard this afternoon. Menard? Yes. Do you know him? A music hall performer. A magician who pulls interesting things out of the air. A close friend of your wife's, he told me. Oh, this visit is regarding my wife? Your wife died unexpectedly in America, I understand. Yes. What was it, sir? The American climate? See here, you have no business coming here questioning me. Yes. My wife died unexpectedly. Is there anything unusual or peculiar about sudden death? Mr. Brown, earlier this evening I talked to a number of your late wife's friends. It seems uh, she disappeared suddenly. Three weeks later they learned she was dead, but your own secretary didn't know it. The young lady you hold hands with, it seems. Uh, Mr. Menard thought it very peculiar. All right, all right, must I admit it? Must I reveal myself as a deceived husband? Yes. My wife ran away to America with another man. I sent out those cars to save my face and her reputation. Now you know it. Oh, I see. Yes. So that's the story. Yes. It's rather sordid, isn't it? Well, I'm sorry if I put Scotland Yard to any trouble. Very sorry. Could I get you a drink, Inspector? Mm -hmm. no, 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 thank you. After all, a man has feelings, sensitiveness. Do you mind if I come back tomorrow? What for? No, since everything is explained, the formal report can wait until then. Oh, I see, yes, of course. Come back tomorrow. I'll say good night then, sir. <clears throat> good night. By the way, sir, what was the name of the firm that did that masonry work on your cellar floor? What? The firm's name that worked on your cellar floor. Oh, uh, uh, Stevens. Yeah, that's it. Stevens. Oh, I see. Good night, sir. See you at 10 o'clock tomorrow. Good night. She wants a divorce and she wants me to come to America immediately. Esther, we can be married. We've got to start tonight. Tonight? Yes. Yes. We'll go to Lisbon and catch a train. But I don't see, Henry, we can leave tomorrow, can't oh, we? Oh, no. The sooner we start, the sooner we can get married. I'll run home. I'll pack him. Oh, no, 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 Esther. It's a new world. It's freedom. Don't pack. Here. Aboard ship, we can't be recognized. It might mean scandal. My clothes. But I'll get you new clothes, different clothes. I'll get them in Liverpool. Come on.
Call them off, Inspector. You found what you were after hours ago. I like to be thorough. The girl's gone, eh? Yes, my men examined her room and the office. Went out last night, never came back. Obviously, she's with him. Dreaming cheap romances and all the time his wife was buried in the cellar. Did she know she's been kissing a murderer? You have a gift for phrases, Inspector. Uh, the office, any sign of it being open? Not a sign, no. They're gone, both of them. Oh, give up the digging, dig, dig it up. I was a fool to say anything about masonry last night. I, I want that man, Brown. I don't like him. He's too sensitive. A sensitive gentleman bludgeon his wife to death, it, it, it outrages me. In formal railway terminals and ships in port. And, oh, yes, uh, let's use that new thing, wireless, invented by that, uh, what's his name? Marconi. Yes, 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 that's the man's name. Let's try that out. Well, it's not been done before. Well, this is the age of progress or nonsense. Wireless all ships at sea. Let us cast Mr. Brown's description upon the waters. <laughs> And this new wireless invention, and it can't even reach the Canadians. The up from Quebec, and a whale boat will bring in a fast message. Ah, I see. Now, there are the towers, skyscrapers, they call them in America, and pretty soon we'll be there, Master George. <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny. The stewards, the waiters, even the captain calling me Master George, and me calling you Father. It's like a wonderful, exciting game. Yes, but still, it's serious. We must avoid scandal. Now, you understand that, don't you? Huh? Yes, no, I swear, all right. That's strange. Huh? What? When I called you Father just now, it was as if you really were. In our home in Wales, we had such a big family. Six brothers, four sisters. I used to get angry because I had to share my father with Oh, uh, no, darling, you'll never have to share me with anybody. Come on, child. Let's build cities and you will. Oh, yes. That's the door. <laughs> Good morning, Captain. Well, we're getting near Quebec, huh? Aye. Dominoes, eh? Yeah. yeah. I'm building castles for the land. Oh, no, it's New York Harbor, Captain. Skyscrapers, the Americans call them. Have you ever been there? Many a time, young master. Oh, George, he's a sea captain. He's been all over the world. I and seen many a thing. But you're the first of you. All kind? Aye. Such a closeness between father and son. Oh, it is a touching thing. Thanks, lad. The pilot boat. Oh, we're pulling in at any time. They are guide to see Oh, yes, yes. They... There's the land, Canada, and way off there's your United States. The new world, Esther, the new world. Henry. Yes? Mrs. Brown, she won't change her mind. No, she? no, she won't. Ever. It's been such a long trip, and so much has happened to me. It's like in stories I don't want ever to end. <laughs> There'll be no ending to this story. In fact, it's just beginning. Like having things that belong yes. just to me. The mind. The house. The <laughs> Henry will really be happy. Oh, we'll be unbelievably happy. See, even the gulls know it's a new world. See how they soar and fly. Yes. In one hour. One more hour, Esther, and we'll be free. Mr. Robinson. Yes? Somebody here to see you. What? A gentleman. All the way from England. Oh, Morning, Mr. Brown. It's, it's impossible. The good Captain Drummond recognized you from this wireless description on wired Liverpool. I caught a fast boat and got here only yesterday. What is it, Father? What is Father, it? Father, better give up the disguise, Miss Stone. Mr. Brown is wanted for the murder of his wife. We found her body buried in the cellar of his home. Ah! <laughs> Esther, Esther, oh, please. Please. Sorry, 
There's my dream. If only I could step on that land. If only I could put my foot on it once again. Come along, sir. On April 12, 1911, Mr. Henry Brown, the first murderer ever caught by transatlantic wireless, was hanged by the neck until he was dead. So we come to the end of another story of suspense brought to you by Autolite. In just a moment, I'll tell you the title of our story for next week and the name of our star. But first, before we say goodnight, I'd like to show you drivers something very interesting. You know, when you need a new seal beam headlight for your car, you want to be very sure that you got one that can really take it if it's broken from stone shot up from the road or other causes. Now, if you puncture an ordinary seal beam headlight, like I'm going to puncture this one, and as a stone might do, you'll find that the light goes out. But when you do the same thing to an Autolite bullseye seal beam, the light continues to burn, giving you extra protection. And you know the Autolite bullseye gives you extra protection too by putting more light on the road, by concentrating the stray reflected light and adding it to the main driving beam. So remember, won't you, when you need a replacement headlight, be sure to insist on the Autolite bullseye seal beam headlight. The white bright headlight gives increased visibility, promotes greater safety, and is made to fit every make of car. Remember, from bumper to headlight, you're always right with Autolite. cordially invites engineers and college engineering students to investigate opportunities with the company. For information, write Autolite's personnel department, Toledo 1, Ohio.